pleased to present for your consideration. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Jabberbox Podcast, episode 27. I'm one of your hosts, Andy Bond, and with me are the icy blues of the desert, the former devil himself, Mr. Daniel Singleton. What's going on, everyone? If you're joining in for the very first time, then you should know that this show is about the two of us as we ramble on through pop culture topics such as, but not limited to, games, movies, shows, and whatever else we want to jabber about. You can get this show over on youtube.com slash dandy digital or over on spotify and itunes by searching Jabberbox and hitting that subscribe button if you like what you hear and want to be part of the show head on over to patreon.com slash dandy digital now let's get on with the show dan what a fucking week it has been uh it's been something it's like, uh full of uh full of covid and work and hassle uh yeah for sure so uh tuesday right yeah it was tuesday uh we dealt with well say okay so this is how the week started for me right monday uh we picked up the kids from school brought them home the youngest was you know starting to get upset, starting to cry. We started to ask what's happening. Her ear was hurting. Uh, she wasn't feeling all that great. So we uh, took her to the uh, the doctor. or uh, Well, we took her to the doctor the next morning, right? Because we tried to do like the medicine, you know, because she's known for getting earaches and fevers. So we tried to give her Tylenol, try to do the, uh, the warm water and the... Um, Oh, yeah. Like shit. washing out the ear kind of thing. Yeah. Try to do that. You know, let her rest there with the hydro, you know, the uh, peroxide in the warm water. Yeah. See, because that's worked a number of times before. So we tried to do that whole thing and then uh, it just wouldn't go away. And then we were up all night Monday, or Mary was up all night Monday, you know, helping with the kid. Like every, it seemed like every hour, every time we put her down to go to sleep, the pain would wake her up and then she'd come and it was just miserable. So we kept her home Tuesday, uh, actually took her to the, the doctor to have it looked at. They tested her. She was not COVID infected. It was just a, a mild earache. Uh, so they gave her some antibiotics. And so she's been doing that Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday early morning or whatever at school. You know, there was a phone call. The other kid had to be picked up because they were running a fever, took them to the rapid uh, testing for COVID and it came back positive. So we had a child here that was positive for COVID and then it's just been a thing, man. It's been a whole ordeal. So we made sure that we were all kind of distancing ourselves from each other, you know, washing everything, wiping shit down. I think I went through two whole things of Clorox in the, in, in two days, you know, every time that I decided to leave the room from work to go get some drink, go to the bathroom, anything like that. I took that with me and I was wiping everything down. Uh, so it's, it's been a thing, you know, and then we've been just trying to wash our, you know, everybody's clothes, wash all the bedding, everything like that, just to try to, to kill it as much as possible. Uh, nobody else has picked up anything so far we don't we don't have any symptoms or anything like that uh the next day actually the fever broke for the you know for the oldest one and felt fine you know after that so uh, other than the youngest one we're all vax so we're hoping that that helped but we're still keeping ourselves in quarantine to make sure it, it stays dead fair enough yeah there's something similar going on over here actually uh so in uh let's see about a week prior to new year uh one of the kids started getting sick and then a couple days after that jessica started not feeling well so it's like a day or two after christmas and uh jessica went to go get tested and it came back negative so we just chalked it up to oh you know everybody has the seasonal you know whatever the cold flu stuff going on Mm New Year's Eve, I started feeling sick and I was sick for like four days, um, you know, called into work for a couple days, felt better after that. Um, kids couldn't quite shake it, though. 
So uh, we took we took uh, Daniel to go get tested, and it came back last night at like eleven thirty at night. Got the notification that he is COVID positive. So we're not sure when exactly, but we're guessing we probably had it this whole time, and that Jessica's was probably a false negative. That's our best guess. But right. uh, yeah, so we're dealing with it over here too. Just uh, nature of living in this world at this point, I guess. Yeah, it's definitely it has come back with a vengeance for sure. You know, it seemed like ever since Christmas, you know, spikes have been happening left and right. And you know, I, I saw some notification on social media that, you know, some of uh, some people that we know also have it. And, you know, it's been it's been fucking crazy. Yeah, pretty sure that uh, some people in my family have gotten it for the second or third time as well. So, yeah, it's just doing its thing. Yeah. Although, if if it was COVID that I had, and like honestly, and the kids and Jessica, it hasn't been too bad as far as symptoms. They've been they have been pretty much like a like a really bad cold. Fortunately, nothing nothing too severe. Yeah. For us. We're seeing that similar over here. It's more like, you know, just tired. You look tight. Ty- they look tired. Um, yeah, just they're So they're just laying in bed, watching TV and drinking fluids. Yeah. After the fever broke, it was just more fatigue for them than anything else. And I, uh, we've been monitoring ourselves and, you know, doing some temperature checks and shit like that. And we're not showing anything. We don't have any fevers. You know, we're making sure that we keep up with our, you know, vitamins and orange juice intake to kind of bump up that vitamin C and rest, you know, so it's not like we, we, we're going to go out and do anything. So might as well just relax, you know, and right. let our body do its thing. Yeah, we kind of had a, a sneaking suspicion when uh, it, we think it that uh, Daniel brought her home from school is our also our best guess, because uh, part of the reason we went to go get him tested is that he came home from school. Um, and said, oh, there was only 12 kids in my class today. <laughs> so we're like, um, that's not normal. So why? He's like, oh, everyone doesn't feel good, I think. So we're like, ah, shit, I guess we should go get him tested. <laughs> sure enough. Yeah. Sure enough. That was actually my nephew. Uh, they were telling us that they dropped down to six kids being active in the class. Yep. 20 some odd kids, you know, so. Yeah, so that was suspicious in itself. So yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I, I feel bad too because um, Allison's birthday is tomorrow, and we had plans to you know go see family and hang out with them, go have dinner. We were going to go to the zoo on uh, Sunday for her birthday and hang out and go see do that, and, and then that's all canceled now. So. I feel bad that she's losing her, her birthday because of that. Yeah, uh, it's kind of the same. The The oldest one that actually has COVID birthdays next week, you know, and so we had a we had a party ish plan, like, a you know, sleepover with like two of our friends and maybe like some, um, you know, going out like roller skating at the skating rink. But we're just going to not do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, essentially. Yep. Yeah, and and uh can't he can't go back to school for ten days as of today, not as of when he was tested two or three days ago. Right. So they they do it from the day that you report it to the school. So yeah, he can't go back to school for ten days, which sucks because he really likes school. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the arts is. I think it's five days after after being you know tested, like confirmed. Um, which was Tuesday. And then so come Monday or Tuesday, I think we're going to go get everybody checked. So, you know, and she's vaxxed. So per the school, they said that they can come back essentially as soon as we have a negative result. Fair enough. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully it comes back all negative for everyone. Yeah. So it, it, it sucks. And I think the most like, the most exhausting thing about it is me running around trying to sanitize and clean everything. Like I'm mentally drained, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, uh, I can only do so much. And then I have to sit down and, and take a break. But 
so with that, I didn't actually. So when we found out about it Tuesday, it like totally derailed everything that we were going to do, which was go out for dinner. You know, we go to we call it our CCTs, right, which is we go to Caramba's and we get our margarita and such and tacos for Taco Tuesday. And then we head down to Crumble, get some cookies. <laughs> and then we weren't able to do that. So I was I was not going to have anything ready for crumble reviews this week but then i got a notification that the one just down the street opened up today and so i had them deliver it at the door (laughs) so they dropped it off and then i was able to go out there and grab it when they when they left and i tasted all the cookies at once which i don't ever want to do again because that's a lot of a lot of sugar you know for one cookie so for sure but you know, so With I'm, that I'm being all, said, though, yeah, I'm all caught up now. Yeah, I was worried for a moment. Hmm. With that being said, what was your what were your thoughts on this week's cookies? Because I have some very strong opinions. Uh, so I really liked the walnut chocolate chip. That was my favorite for the week. Uh, mine, too. And I was extremely surprised by it. Yeah. In fact, it's in my top three all time. Oh, wow. I wasn't that surprised by it. <laughs> I was I was that surprised by it. Be- and I think part of the reason that, uh, that ranks so high is because I had it. They I literally watched it come out of the oven and into the box. Next. And then I ate it within like 60 seconds after that. So it was as fresh as you can possibly get it. And it was perfect. It was perfect. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, with it being as good as it was, it only came in number 22 for me. I had one other in my top 10, but it was number 10. Oh, uh, which one was that? That was the um, cinnamon swirl. That one was my third for the week. Uh, still good. Um, you know, just like just like what we say, you know, it's just because it's not you know, the best of the week doesn't mean it's not a a pretty good one. So that one was my number three. Um, It was exactly what I expected it to be. I didn't really knock my socks off or anything like that, but it was really good. It was an exact uh, replica, basically, of a cinnamon roll. It's exactly what you want it to be. Yeah. No muss, no fuss, straight down the middle. Uh. My second one was the chilled hot chocolate cookie. That was my number three. Because that mousse is fucking delicious. And it actually ranked higher than the hot version of that cookie. (laughs) Same for me, actually. (laughs) I was like, well, that one was really good when I had it because it was surprising. This one, I just the way I guess the mousse of it really just fucking hit my taste buds the way I I like it. Yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat and. In fact, it only it ranked higher by one. So I have hot, frozen hot chocolate at 32. I have hot chocolate at 33. So it I mean, it did rank higher, though. It, there's oh. something, there was something yeah. about it that was just better. Yeah, the, the cold hot chocolate cookie ranked number 28, came in 28 for me, whereas the hot version of it came in at 40. Well, that's a that. Yeah, that's a much bigger difference. <laughs> So, uh, so it and like, it sounds like uh, both of us had Neapolitan as the as the bottom rank for the week. Yeah, I there, some, I wasn't too impressed by it. Um, I felt like it was a bit much for all the flavors. And it could be the, like the thickness of the strawberry cream that they put on the top. The strawberry frosting was a bit much. So it like it hit in a in a weird way that. I don't know what didn't impress me. That one actually ranked pretty low. That came in like number 88 for me. So that one was 69 overall for me. And nice. um, yeah, right. <laughs> nice. Uh, I just felt like the, I, like I didn't get any flavor out of it, really. Like everything just kind of mushed up in my mouth. And then I couldn't taste any distinct flavor. Not because of COVID, uh, just because the, the flavor in the icings were way too subtle for me. There was no bold like, oh, here's some strawberry and here's some motherfucking chocolate. There, there was none of that. Uh, that's weird because like when I had mine, that all came in 
individually as I was like biting it, as it hit my tongue and, and you know, I, I bit through it, <clears throat> I could feel, I could taste all of the, uh, the different flavors. What I'm hoping as we go into spring and early summer in the next few months, um, that we get more strawberry stuff from them because we haven't really seen that yet. And I'm, I'm hoping for it. Like, a, look, I know we had the blueberry cheesecake. I think a strawberry cheesecake would be a really good cookie. Um, yeah, I thought. Plus, I think we didn't we have like a or I might have had a strawberry shortcake at some point, which that yeah, was really good. Yeah, that must have been just before I started the weekly uh, cookie thing. Yeah. I'm up to 90, 90. Is it 90? Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me see how many total cookies I have here. I forgot to update my uh, lowest rank uh, numbering system here. So, uh, yeah, 98 I, total <clears throat> overall. You had 98. And yeah, but 98. you have some doubles that weren't technically new cookies, right? No, no, no. These are individually unique cookies, 98 of them. Right. But you added some because of how they frosted certain cookies. One. So you could say I've had 97. Yeah. Which was the, uh, Dolce de Leche. Cause there's one where they did the swirl pattern and then there was one where they did, uh, like a, I have it less listed in here as dollop, but basically they had the caramel over the top and then they just did like a one blob in the middle on top of the cream. So it was a little different and it was legitimately a different flavor for some reason. I think it was just a ratio issue. So that's the only one that I have duplicate uh, rankings for. Everything else is unique. So I guess you could say I have 97 yeah. total unique cookies. <laughs> Cool, man. Oh, egg- Shit, 96, because eggnog, with and without the cinnamon sprinkle. Right. Okay. Okay, 96. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I also tried I also tried their ice cream this week. Yeah, how was that? I, mean, I haven't had that at all. So we had the fudge brownie ice cream. Uh, it, was, it wasn't bad. Um, <laughs> for that particular flavor, it wasn't as creamy as I would have liked. I, I prefer like the Ben and Jerry's super fudge brownie or whatever they call theirs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I prefer that one over <clears throat> this one, but I'm glad I tried it and I'll probably try a new ice cream flavor every week. I don't think I'm going to rank them like we do with the cookies here, um, but I'm probably going to try a new flavor every week just to, you know, mix things up a bit. Dang. Cool, man. <laughs> try to mix them up with some of the cookies, too. Yeah, especially if they ever do that uh, cookie cup again. Apparently, apparently I was right, by the way. I talked to the crew and I went in to pick up my cookies this week. And uh, they said that the reason they did the cookie cup last week was because they introduced ice cream at the at most of the facil- uh, most of the franchises that didn't have it already. So that's part of the reason they, mm. they did it that, that way. Well, you should let people know that's what you intend. Yeah, it was not well advertised. I yeah, would agree. Not at all. But it was still good on its own, I think. For that cookie anyway. Uh, but that's it for our cookies for the week. You know, let's uh, hopefully we can get to them next week. Uh, in the meantime, however, uh, we've kind of been going into some Legos. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness, Andy. Andy, do you know what happened yesterday with Legos for me? Uh, you bought the Titanic. Oh, yes, I did. I <laughs> was able to secure an order direct from Lego uh, for the Lego Titanic set, which is the largest, dimensionally largest Lego set that's ever been made. It's not the largest piece count. Um, that's the world map. Which I also have on the way, by the way. So I'm going to be very busy with Legos for quite some time. (laughs) That's awesome. The world map is 11,500 or (laughs) 11,600 pieces. But you don't use all those pieces because the way that they have it is when you make the world map, they give you a ton of extra pieces with tons of different colors so that you can customize the oceans. You can put right. patterns in there. You can do whatever you want. So there's a there's probably, a, you know, a thousand, I'm guessing, pieces extra in there, uh, maybe even two thousand. So you can customize however you want. 
Um, whereas with the Lego Titanic, those 9,090 pieces, I'm guessing 9,000 of those are probably in the build. Yeah, uh, probably. And it's right. super detailed. Like you can break it open and you can <clears> see <throat> the, en- the individual engines and the s- state rooms are all separated out. So there's a ton of detail in it. It's going to take yeah. quite some time. And I'm, I'm pretty excited. My biggest concern is finding a place to display it once it's finished. But, you know, that's future Dan's problem. Right. It would look really great on the shelf right above my computer. That's uh, that's I'm thinking that once we get <laughs> our um, once we get the TV, we want the new TV for our living room. Um, we're going to we already have the wall mount for it. So once it's mounted on the wall, we're going to be able to put it right below our TV on our entertainment center. Are you going to get one of those like um, those casings for it? I might. I'm going to have to look into that, but I haven't decided yet. The only reason I would do something for like that is because of the dust and children. You know? Yeah. I'd stop them from touching it, and then you wouldn't have to dust it, which would potentially knock it over or, you know, break some pieces off, and then you have to try to put it together delicately, you know? Well, the best way to dust Legos is definitely canned air. Like you would with a keyboard. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll have to figure it out. That's again, that's future Dan's problem. I got to even I just got to have to receive it and then build it first. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was super stoked to get get one of them because they sold out super fast. I, ha- I was set up for notifications once it came back in stock. And so as soon as I got the notification, I went and looked and it was still there. And by the time I finished checking out, it was sold out. Fucking a man. So. I'm pretty happy I got got a hold of that one. And it was and it has gone down in price since Christmas. So for Christmas, I think it was like 800 bucks. Yeah, it is now 630. So it's Not gone bad. down. Yeah, it's gone down in price. A good chunk. Um, So I was pretty happy. Pretty happy with that. Hell yeah, man. That's yeah. actually on, on my dock for this weekend as well. We're going to watch uh, Ghostbusters. Uh, afterlife and we're going to watch the eternals and i'm going to build the typewriter lego Ooh, that's fun yeah i'm very excited about i like the the ideas the lego idea sets much more than i like any of the other sets you know so like like i built my bonsai tree that i got for my birthday and that was just the fucking neatest little thing that i could do and and it changes so I still have the pieces in my closet that if I wanted to, I could change the green into like the um, the pink and white. So it almost looks like a cherry blossom type bush. And right? doesn't it use frogs like pink frogs? I think. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's the uh, actual it's it's the most uh, frog usage in any set is what it said in the booklet. Yep. So yeah, which is it, re- it, really cool. I've, I've seen it and I'm on the I want to get the. Uh, the bonsai tree for Jessica, which I we've already talked about. So she, I know she's going to listen to this and she already knows this. I want to get that for her because she has all of the other Lego plants. Um, so she That's has cool. The, she has the bird of paradise. She has the flower bouquet. She has the roses. She has the tulips. Yeah, I missed oh, I out wanna... on those. I saw that they had the bird of paradise in, at the Lego store. I uh, just like not able to get at the moment. Uh, the other thing that I missed out on, unfortunately, is the uh, ship in a bottle. I really wanted yeah. that one. Um, but after I did the the bonsai tree, I picked up the Lego Christmas wreath which is actually still hanging up in my room. I got to put it in its box, but um, I really like the Christmas Lego sets. So that I'll probably, you know, my goal is to try to grab another one or two next year. So I did that. And then I got the uh, Lego Adidas, which is really fucking neat, which I think I talked about, you know, yeah, when we, we came back. From our yeah. So I got that. And then now the typewriter. So I like these unique sets, you know, like I would love to get the grand piano, but that's, you know, like a pipe dream, essentially, unless you buy it when it first comes out. It's it's kind of ridiculous to go after it. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's a lot (laughs) of uh, part of the reason they sell out so quick for sets that like that is people buy them as many as they can and then they resell them for like double or triple. Yeah. So it kind of ruins it for a lot of people. So that's why I try to buy from either, uh, you know, 
reputable retailers or Lego directly. Yeah, I, I won't buy shit like that on eBay um, unless I really have to. I've bought one Lego set on eBay and it wasn't um, outrageously priced. The normal retail for it was 60 and I paid 75 and it's retired. So I was like, OK, I, you know, I'll pay a little bit of a premium for something that's retired and I can't get any other way. I understand. And it didn't seem like it was too gougy. 15 bucks over retail for something yeah. that's retired. That's not terrible. I think for something like that, I would like if it was 60 bucks normally, I would max out at 100. If it goes over 100, I'm not going to go get it. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, I get that, it. That's <clears throat> especially fair. if it's out of print, you know, like I mean, that's I mean, that comes like that when it comes to vinyl and shit. It's like, yeah, it's out of print. So I can understand that the vinyl that I probably could have picked up at the time for $40 is $125, you know? Right. And yeah, while sure. I haven't purchased those kinds of things yet, it's definitely something that I'm not, you know, opposed to, <laughs> you know, especially because it's like there's certain ones that I don't think I'm ever going to fucking get. And I've been waiting to see if they do like repressings like AFI Sing the Sorrow. That was on a final and that sold out. And that's, you know, one hundred and twenty five bucks to two hundred bucks or so. And I. But at the same time, I'm like, I know you guys have been like re-releasing certain things. I'm waiting for them to do this. For this particular, like, this is the one album everybody fucking wants, and they haven't done anything, any represses for it, which is ridiculous. I was like, that's the fucking album that put you guys on the map, man. Like, repress it so we can fucking have it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I, I'm really excited because one of the Lego ideas on their ideas website that I voted for hit enough votes of support that Lego now has it under review, and it's the SR71 Blackbird, and I think I may have spoken about it last week. Um, so I don't know if you talked about that one. You were talking about the like the NASA ones. Oh, yeah, the NASA ones. Oh, I I have all those and those are all done already. Do you have the like the women of NASA one? Because I saw that when I was looking up shit. And yes, I do. I got a hold of it and I'm going to be giving it to Allison for her birthday tomorrow. Nice. Yeah. So it'll probably go up with my NASA sets for now. Um, but it'll be her little NASA set that I'm going to build with her. Um, I've built some with with Daniel and now I'm going to build some with her and I'm going to let her build it and then I'll just help her along and, you know, OK, this is the step we're on. These are the pieces we need. This is where they go. Yeah, but she's going to be the one she's going to be the one physically, you know, doing it. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. That's cool. <laughs> definitely definite Legos in our future. <laughs> yeah, it has like I haven't done Legos in a long time and it has really reminded me like hey, this is a fun hobby. Why did you stop doing this? Cuz it's expensive and it, it takes up a lot of space. It is expensive and it does take up space. Um I have probably two or three dozen Lego sets in in my uh little storage closet in my house as well that I haven't looked at in a while. No. Um, so I'm probably going to at some point pull those out and try to find a place for those too. Cause some of those are really cool. Yeah. I have no idea what I'm going to do with some of these big ones. You know, I'll probably put them on display for a little bit and then I don't know. Cause my office area is like very small. So unless I start making some huge changes and getting shelves, I don't think it's good. They're going to stick around a whole lot until we move but you know like i have a star wars ship that i barely put together i could i could send you a picture it's like it's uh the um the republic cruiser right oh yeah from from like and so it was like essentially what the star destroyers become and i built the engine and then i had to move so it's just been sitting in the garage this entire time which is probably (laughs) pushing 15 years now Hmm. And like now, like doing the the Lego bonsai and all this, all these other sets that I have. And I'm assuming that once I finish that typewriter, I'm going to jump right into it, into that Star Wars one. I don't have anywhere to put that. So it'll be like, I built it and then I got to find a box for it. But (laughs) yeah, the the Lego Star Wars Ultimate Collector Series stuff, like the, um, Millennium Falcon, Star Destroyer, the At At, all of those. So I have some of the original Ultimate Collector Series sets um, from, again, the, the, you know, we're pushing 
18 years ago, 18 yeah. years old, 19 years old. So I have like a lot, I have a huge X wing. I have a huge tie fighter. I have the Tantive four. I have the original ultimate collectors, millennium Falcon. So not the new one, not the massive one. I have one that's a pretty good size, but it's not the, anywhere close to the one that they have now. Um, so, you know, where, where the hell am I going to put those? Right. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe one day we'll have a studio <laughs> and we'll just display them all. Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> cool, man. Uh, so that's what we've been up to. Um, I did see in the news that the uh, the did you see this? The gates of hell that we have here. Well, not here, but well, not here. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> like on Earth, like an actual thing uh, that they're trying the crater uh, that's been burning in the was it the the Karu- Karukum Desert. Since the seventies, they're looking to see about uh, finally. Yeah, it's closing in, it's in uh, Turkmenistan. Yeah. So it was a Soviet drilling project that went wrong back in the seventies, seventies, seventy or seventy one, I think. And uh, some natural gas started leaking out of this pit that was created by accident, and uh, the Soviets were just like, "Oh yeah, we're just gonna light it on fire and." We'll burn off all the excess gas to make it safe, and uh, it'll it'll probably burn itself out in a couple weeks. And here we are, fifty years later, and it's still going. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be neat if we can actually get it to stop, because I, you know, they have talked about how it just is constantly fucking up the area, like as far as the ozone and and all that shit goes. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes. I'm going to be paying attention to that one. Yeah, I'm sure that that is not an easy undertaking. No. So, I mean, it's probably not as difficult as something like, uh, you know, they're still working on sealing Chernobyl. <laughs> they're still building the uh, the concrete and, and, and lead sarcophagus around the uh, melted down reactor. So it's probably not that complicated, but I can't imagine that it's as simple as just bulldozing some dirt into into a pit. <laughs> right. Otherwise, they would have done that already. Oh, yeah. But I thought, yeah, I thought that was interesting. You know, every once in a while, these little bits and pieces of information that's happening around the world that's not so much people related, but more like natural things uh, happen. And it really catches my eye. So, yeah. And that, that story is a little bit of both. So. Yeah. Oh, because yeah, we we created it, but yeah. I mean, but, yeah. oh, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say that uh, where it comes to nature and man, kind of meeting. I'm excited for. I think we talked about it last week, but the James Webb Space Telescope. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. So it has it's now passed all of its major hurdles. It's fully unfolded. It's now calibrating and, and adjusting all of its mirrors. So fuck yeah, dude. I'm I'm stoked. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that turns into a Lego set one day too. <laughs> right. Well, uh so where's that supposed to be going? So it's going to the L two uh distance, which is on the far side of the moon. I believe it's just shy of a million miles away. Um, it's like nine hundred and fifty eight thousand or something like that. I don't quote me on that, uh, but it's going there um, and it will be out of serviceable range. So if something does go wrong, uh, we won't be able to get to it to fix it. Um, but it's past all of its major hurdles. So even if something does go wrong at this point, so short of catastrophic failure, we'll be able to get something from it. So it's not a complete loss. Um, but it's everything's looking really good. Uh, those engineering and and, and t- uh, launch teams have really nailed it. In fact, they were so perfect with everything that um, they anticipated 10 years of fuel. Uh, and they've been so efficient so far with getting everything done that they came out and they're like, uh, we think we're going to be able to get closer to 20 years because we have so much extra fuel that because we hit the launch trajectory so perfectly. Nice. So well, what's, over, so what's uh, it supposed to be under, doing out there, though? So it will be taking images of the. Basically, the baby universe, about 100 million years after the Big Bang of galaxies that are so distant and so faint that we had we, we believe that they're there, um, but we've 
not seen them. Hubble is not capable of viewing them because gotcha. they have been giving off light from such a far distance for so long that by the time it's reaching us, it has shifted into uh, infrared. And so this uh, James Webb is specifically designed to view infrared. Uh, so it will be able to see that um, those, those galaxies that uh, have red shifted away from us and, and are, you know, by the time it gets here, it's only <clears throat> infrared. Right. So we'll be able to see stuff and learn stuff that uh, has not been possible up to this point. That's neat. That's really cool. I'm excited to see what those images are going to be like. Yeah. Plus, um, there's going to be some. That's not going to be the only thing it does. Um, That's its primary goal. Um, But it's also got some time dedicated to uh, solar system. Uh, observation so it's going to look at some planets and some moons to gather more information for some of the stuff that's closest to us Uh, it's also going to be looking at some black holes Um, you know what was it Uh, one or two years ago we got our first image of a black hole Um, so now it's going to try to improve that image because it wasn't the it's not like it's high def (laughs) Um, it was a very complicated process to get that image. So it now it's just a matter of time of working on getting a clearer picture of a, of a black hole, which is obviously, for obvious reasons, very difficult to get. Right. So cool, there's going to be, gonna be a lot of interesting <clears throat> things that come our way in the world of space exploration in the next uh, five to 15 years. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Plus that, whatever Elon Musk is working on and everybody else is worth working on. You know, this isn't NASA's only, uh, you know, only thing. It's just the big thing right now. So NASA are, already has some stuff in the works to go to. Um, I believe it's Titan. So they're going to they're going to land a rover out there uh, and fly around <laughs> out there to check it, check things out with liquid, liquid water, um, get some samples. There's uh, right now there is a sample of a meteorite on its way back to Earth. Um, so once that arrives and, an- and it gets analyzed, we'll be able to learn some cool stuff there. So, th- I mean, it's not the only thing going on, James Webb, um, but it's it's currently the big one. Cool. You have to keep us updated on that when when we get some more information for sure. But uh, in the meantime, Dan, yes, sir. Uh, what have you been playing? So, uh, well, the the it continues. I've been playing a lot of PUBG, um, which isn't anything new or special per se. But, uh, you know, I keep playing it. I enjoy it. I get screwed a lot in that game and uh, I don't win very often, but uh, I, I do enjoy it. And that's part of the reason people play games is to have fun. So I play that. But I p- did start playing something new. Well, kind of new. Um the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which is all three games in one. Uh, it's on Game Pass. I downloaded that. I started playing this week. Um, so I'm revisiting this game. I, I played and beat all three of them when they first came out. So I figured, why not do it again? Hell and yeah. I am I am playing all of them on Insanity because, you know, achievements. Um, so it's it's grueling. It is slow going, especially early game. But uh, I'm, I'm starting to get the feel of it and hang for it again. The only real gripe I have with it is something that I had forgotten about since I played it, because this game is not um, recent. And, you know, Mass Effect 1 came out in 2007. Right. So is the button configuration and the fact that you can't change it. It's uh, it's it's messing with me a bit. <laughs> yeah. And. My I think that'd be my only complaint for the you know Mass Effect series is that they change the f- buttons for every fucking game. Yeah, so it's very difficult <laughs> like or it's very annoying, I guess, when you're doing them back to back to back, you know, for all three and all the button configurations keep changing. And you can't change them, which right. is and they're and they never overlap with existing uh norms for shooter games right so like 
in most games, if you want to change your weapon, it's Y on Xbox. Oh, well, in Mass Effect 1, it's not Y. It's left bumper. What? <laughs> uh, <coughs> most games on Xbox, if you want to reload, it's X. Well, that doesn't uh, really apply in Mass Effect because you don't reload. You just have a heat sink you have to worry about. So it, it just... So it, when you press X out of habit from other games, not, you're throwing grenades. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. I didn't mean to throw a grenade. Right. So, yeah, it's uh, it's an adjustment, especially when you switch between games. Because, I mean, just this morning I was playing Mass Effect, and then I went over and played a round of PUBG with a buddy of mine. And so when you go from one game to the other and then back and forth, it's a, it's a, an abrupt adjustment for getting used to those different controls. So it's it's really my only gripe. It's really my only gripe. Yeah, other, but other than that, it's it's awesome. I saw that you were playing it, and I, you know, I saw that they brought it to Game Pass, which I knew you'd jump into it, but that's why I kind of wanted to jump back into it as well, because I, I bought it for the PlayStation, and for a, a better part of last year when we started recording the show is that's what I was playing on the on the PlayStation for sure. Yep, and speaking of Xbox... They have ceased production of Xbox One consoles, S and X. Yep. So, which, which kind of makes sense and kind of doesn't. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, it I does know, make sense. I'm, Sony is ramping up production of PS4. Yeah, but it, the PlayStation 4 was a great console. The Xbox One, not so much. Well, the Xbox One X wasn't terrible. Yeah, but, but it's, compared to it, it's, but it's it's ancient compared to even the even the Series S. Right. Like they that console was created it was modeled and created based on an idea that didn't take off. And that was the whole like it's, you know, the whole reason they called it the Xbox One is it, this is a all in one console, you know, entertainment box, essentially, you know. So a lot of its in, innards is trying to do things and make up for other things that it's not doing anymore, like the whole TV thing. So it, I'm surprised that they actually called it now as opposed to a little bit beforehand. Um. And I think that has something to do with the the Xbox Series S being more readily available in the wild. Yeah. Oh, it for so. sure is. Yeah, it is. Because I've and I was one of those guys. I mean, when I was at the store, where it's like I'm going for a Series X, and they're like we're sold out, but we have a Series S, and I'm like, no thanks. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I don't want how that. Long, how long do you think it'll be before they just create a console, and then over time they just have parts that you interchange like so a pc it basically a pc but as a console is what i'm saying like it, just take out all of the guesswork kind of like plugging in a usb almost just, uh, simpl- just simplify that process for a console i don't Instead think we'll ever get to that point you don't think so no because uh. like th- there's so many different things that they want to do. Technology changes and it's just like a PC where after a certain point, you have to completely gut it and rebuild it from the start to keep up with it. So, yeah, you know, like, yeah, you could be here's here's the new PlayStation X, right? And then you can update the hard drive as you were able to do for all the other ones. And now you can update, you know, this and piece and this piece. But like at a certain point, a lot of in order to progress that you have to do some changes that are going to be so drastic that you're going to have to rebuild it. it you might as well just buy a whole new console at that point yeah I, suppose. I mean that's and that's the whole like reason i don't do a whole lot of games on pc is because of that reason and because people gouge the shit out of certain pieces like graphics cards that it's it's pointless you know what i mean like when it comes to down to me having to get another computer or do upgrades to a computer, I'm going to just have to buy like a pre-built one and just run with that one. You know what I mean? Like that's exactly what I did. I'm not going to try to build it piecemeal because it's so fucking outrageous to get these goddamn pieces. You know, you want it to look good, 
right? So I can play games on the computer I have now. It's it's you know like a nine hundred that's a thousand dollar PC gaming PC or whatever. So it's not the best one out there, and I'm not being I'm not going to be able to see every fucking blade of grass, you know, in certain games. But it does it does the job. And it runs well, and I'm happy with it. So, you know, if I want my games to look whatever, I'll I'll get it on my 4K TV and my 4K consoles. You know, I don't I don't care about that kind of stuff. And frankly, I don't think that'd be a smart move for these companies. Yeah, well, everything's turning into a service now, so I'm sure they might find a way. Xbox is definitely going to, you know. Uh, Sony even yeah. tried doing that because you know, they have their Sony TVs. You know, you can connect a PlayStation controller to that and stream like PlayStation Now games on there. Yeah, everything's turning into a service now. I don't know if you heard I, this is off topic from technology, but it, like Circle K and Taco Bell now have uh, like subscription services. Wow. OK, have you heard about this? No, like, I, I think it's. um ten dollars a month at both i think it's that much at both locations so at circle k for ten dollars a month you can go in there once a day every day and you can get a free fountain drink well free i mean you're paying for the subscription or at taco bell for ten dollars a month you can get one taco a day well i mean if you eat there a lot i guess i guess but but I, I just thought it was ridiculous how food is now becoming a subscription service. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. And it's only a matter of time before all that shit crumbles, too. I guess we'll find out. You know, all these like there's loyalty and that's cool. But the subscription service, eventually people are going to get tapped out. They're going to stretch themselves too thin and then you know, then they're going to have to start making choices as it is. Uh, yeah, like this is the beginning of the fast food wars that Taco Bell inevitably wins. According uh, to, according to demolition, man. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> even though, you know, I, I can't even eat Taco Bell without being fucking sick for three days. Right. But I mean, it's only with Taco Bell starting it. How long until McDonald's starts doing something? Where, hey, for $15 a month, you can get two cheeseburgers every day. Or, you know, whoever. It, every fast food joint will probably find a way to start doing something similar. Fuck, man. If you get those two cheeseburgers a day, we're going to look like those people from Wally. -E. Yeah, no joke, right? Yeah. Like, we're already littering the place like it's going to be that way. So, might as well start getting our hover chairs and our fatty, fat, fats in them, you know? I'm not fat. I'm just preparing. <laughs> uh, so cool, man. That's cool that you've been playing that. Uh, I've been playing Spyro the Dragon. I picked that up on the Xbox. It was on sale. I love Spyro, the reignited trilogy. Uh, I when I like, dude, that that game was the game that got me into PlayStation. I remember going to back in the 90s, right? Back in the day, way back, Sony had one of those semi trucks that would drive around to different locations. And in the trucks, they had all these different games loaded up, right? Like built into the back, almost like those gaming companies that drive around. You know, I think like yeah. your cousin has one. Yeah, but my this was on has a, has a party a video game party bus company right so essentially it was like that but it was on a, a semi truck that just said playstation across it um i i went in there i played it i played like the contra i played twisted metal you know all this shit and then i saw spyro and i that as a 10 year old boy you know that enamored me like, i was all in there and that's what got me like that you know that christmas i have to have a playstation i gotta have spyro i gotta you know and like it's it was such a great game and I played all three games and I beat all three games on the PlayStation and the series kind of, you know, went sideways a little bit like most mascot games. And then they did the reignited trilogy again, PlayStation one, uh, Spyro one, two and three, and they put it on all these consoles and I picked it up on the P PS4. I was so stoked. I got my platinum trophy on all three of them. And then, you know, they I was like, 
I saw it on sale. I was like, you know, I, it's been a while since I've played it and I love it. So I, I picked it up and I think in like four days, I'm already at the, I'm on the final world. You know, I'm about like 80% done with the game, you know, 85% done with the game. So, Dang. dude, it's like I, I love it. So I've been playing that a lot. Uh, I, I tinkered away at Tales of Arise, the RPG in the Tales series. It's a real like it's very anime esque. Right. But it's like a Final Fantasy. I finally beat it. It was one of those things where it's like I, I put it down and play other games. And then, you know, I haven't played that game in a while. So I put it on. And then I'd play a little bit of it. I'm like, man, I, this is a really fucking good game. I don't know why I keep putting it down. And then I would put it down and they'd come back and you know, man, this is a this is a cool game. I gotta remember to pick it back up. And so that was my cycle for 2021. And then I sat down and I just powered through it and got through the end. And now I'm doing like the end game shit. Right. So I'm I'm, I'm thinking I might want to go for the platinum trophy in this one, right? The hundred percent of it. But uh, I found all the collectibles, so it, with all 38 collectibles that I found, it's going to allow me to do New Game Plus with all my shit. So, like, you know, my character progression, you know, all my levels, all my gear, all my skills, like, everything. And the way that these games set it up is you have to find those collectibles in order to do that. Because if you're like, oh, I unlocked New Game Plus and you start it, you're starting from scratch unless you find those artifacts. So I was able to do that and... That's what I've been kind of up to uh, here and there. And then the still tinkering away at the Halo multiplayer a little bit. And uh, I think that's it. Mm, Halo multi. I've pretty much given up on Halo. Yeah, I figured once you <laughs> Irish goodbye to us. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it, it was funny. Like uh, Randall was sitting there and he's like, hey, he left the party, but he's still in the game because your body came back. It's, no, he's not. He's not here. <laughs> and, no, then, I and then like we we're watching it and then we just see your character like disappear and your guns drop on the ground i was like see he's gone so yeah he's like should we reach out i was like no <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i was like uh, uh i'm familiar with this with call of duty yeah let him have his space <laughs> good call yeah so but um we do need to get back into aliens you know i need Agreed. to because that was that's a lot of fun i like i like doing that i, I like doing the co-op type games too so but yeah i'll go back to halo once they have the co-op campaign yeah <clears throat> yeah because i'm gonna want to do that too i still haven't beat the campaign i i need to do that but uh that's Whack. essentially what i've been playing well, i beat it for you because i beat it twice so the <laughs> average work the average works out <laughs> Yeah, I'll I'll get around to doing it because I do still want to go back and and try to find that gun, see if I can get access to it, you know, from that cheat yet or not. But sure. um, I just I don't know. I haven't jumped into it, and I I don't know. I think I'm fairly close. I have to double check my percentage, but you know, I think I was like at seventy percent. So uh, I'm like I'm getting close. And, and you have to go around and find everything and all the unlocks and armor crates. and Yeah, and that's kind of what's been taking me so long is once a new area opens up, I'll go and do a lot of that shit. Yeah, it takes so. a little time, but it's worth it. Yeah. Uh, but so so that's it for what we've been playing. Uh, and then you kind of and we've already talked about the Xbox season production, but uh, PlayStation has and or they had you know, they are ending the uh, PlayStation Now gift card options, which everyone's taking that as a sign for that they're doing this in an anticipation for their Game Pass like service that they're going to be coming out with. Now they have PlayStation Plus, right, which is essentially like the games with gold. So you have that, so you can play online and such like that. And then PlayStation Now was the service that you could stream games, essentially like a rental service. And while it's not quite like Game Pass, I think they're going to be rolling out something that's going to be combining everything and having multiple tiers, which is going to be fucking dope. Because for one hundred and twenty dollars a year, I can do Game Pass Ultimate and then whatever PlayStation, you know, is going to be. And Mm -hmm. I get access to all these fucking games. That's going to be awesome. You know, so I just I hope they do it as well as Xbox does Game Pass Ultimate, you know. 
because they really knock it out of the park. It's it's yeah, awesome. Game Pass Ultimate is pretty solid. Right, because they, especially with them teaming up, I mean, EA doesn't really have like a whole lot of games I give a shit about, but it's cool that with Game Pass Ultimate, you have access to all those EA Play games. I like it because it, it doesn't force you to buy the, like the newest Madden is on there. 21, maybe? I don't know if 22 is on there, but screw buying the same game every year like Madden or uh, FIFA. So, yeah, I'm fine with it. <clears throat> yeah. So that that's going to be cool. I'm looking forward to seeing what they have to do. I bet you we see something like that at, uh, you know, some sort of PlayStation conference, if not E3, because I know that they do their state of play. So that'll be interesting to see that or a blog post. Who fucking knows? They also announced that God of War is out on PC as of today, which is January 14th. And I honestly think you should try to play that game, man. It is really fucking good. And you have a your computer will run it. So is this the original and, one? Uh, no, it's the 2018 one. So it's, oh, okay. so you you can watch you know videos on YouTube or whatever to catch you up on the story because it's it does while it's like a soft reboot it's a progression it's like a sequel to god of war one two three chains of olympus ghost of sparta like all those that happened and then when they brought him back he was much older he had a kid you know like the story was actually really fucking good and he's not in his old element you know what i mean he left and now he's part of uh you know like like uh like he left the whole area with zeus like that mythology and he came over and now he's like running around with uh, Zeus and, you know, the whole Valhalla and all that shit. So um, really fucking dope, man. So I, I highly recommend it. And it got great reviews and won Game Award, game Awards and stuff like that for 2018, you know, when it came out. So it's definitely worth a playthrough. Um, so uh, other than that, though, and speaking of awards, so the Dice Awards are going to be coming up. And they that's going to be held held on February 24th. I believe it's in Vegas again, but they did uh, they on IGN. They dropped a whole list of nominees. Right. So the game of the year award. For the 2021 is uh, up for. Grabs by Deathloop inscription. It takes two, ratchet and clank rift apart and returnal. So, like, I haven't actually played a couple of those games, but, you know, It Takes Two took a lot of awards, you know, last year at the Game Awards. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, that game is fucking great on the PlayStation. Like, that was a game, aside from Astrobot on the PlayStation 5, that showcased what that console can do, right? So, uh, if you're not familiar with it, A Rift Apart is essentially, like something happened in the game and like all these worlds essentially started collapsing on themselves. And you have all these portals and you can jump around different planets and stuff like that. And instead of like your character, you know, grabbing onto a portal and jumping into it, he grabs the portal and brings the world to him in real time. So there's no loading or anything like that for like the different jumps. It just, it works so fucking fast and it was really fucking great. The controls with the dual sense and the haptic feedback, it was awesome. Uh, so, uh, re- you know, and the same thing with Returnal. Returnal actually pushed that system almost immediately of what it was supposed to be or what it is. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see what game grabs the game of the year. Uh, they have the other ones like Outstanding Achievements in Animation, you know, Call of Duty, Deathloop, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, Ratchet and Clank again is up there, Resident Evil Village. Uh, Outstanding Achievement in Art Direction. It seems like, a, you know, almost the same list, actually, as the uh, achievement Very. in animation. Uh, oh, and then you, is the exact same. Yeah, yeah. yeah Call of Duty, Deathloop, uh, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, Ratchet and Clank, Resident Evil Village. And then you have Outstanding Achievements in Character. So you have Cole Vaughn from Deathloop, Kenna from Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, Alex Chen from Life is Strange, uh, True Colors, Rivet from Ratchet and Clank, and Lady uh, Dimitrescu. whatever. Dimitrescu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lady D from uh, Resident Evil Village. 
Uh, then you have outstanding achievements and original music composition, uh, which is Deathloop. It takes two Kenna, which actually has a great soundtrack. You know, I did get that with my deluxe copy of the game. Uh, Psychonauts 2 Returnal. Uh, then we have outstanding achievements in audio design, Forza Horizon 5, Halo Infinite, It Takes Two, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, Returnal, uh, outstanding achievement in story, Before Your Eyes, Inscription, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, Psychonauts 2, The Forgotten City, uh, the technical I'm, achievements. What were you yeah, saying? I'm surprised by one of the nominees in outstanding technical achievement being Battlefield 2042. I have not played it. But I've seen the reviews and comments online for that game. And everything technical about that game seems to be broken. So I'm kind of surprised it's been nominated here for technical achievement. Yeah. So we have Battlefield 2042, Forza Horizon 5, Mon Cage, uh, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, and Returnal again. So again, I've heard nothing but you know negative comments and, and reviews and such for Battlefield. Uh, I actually have not heard of Mon Cage. But the technical achievements for Forza Horizon 5, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, and Returnal all make sense to me because I have had my hands on those. <clears throat> um, the action game of the year that's up, Deathloop, Halo Infinite, Metroid Dread, Returnal, The Ascent. Um, adventure game of the year, Death, Death's Door, which is great you know, to see them on there. It takes two. No surprise there. Guardians of the Galaxy is a surprise, but I know a lot of people really like it. Psychonauts 2, Resident Evil Village. You know, a- I wish that I had a way to play It Takes Two. But uh, I, have I think no, we're going to have to like set up some time and just fucking we can play it together, man. Yeah, I guess we'll have to figure it out. I just have no one to consistently play that a game like that with. So, yeah, if we yeah, we'll have to like make it a day, you know, what I mean, where it's like, hey, on X day, you know, let's play this. So that way we're not trying to figure out a schedule. We can be like, hey, on Mondays or whatever, like I'm going to play this game with Dan for a, and it doesn't have to be super crazy. It could be like a level. You know what I mean? Sure. That way it gets it gets us consistently doing it, but doesn't take over the whole night or anything like that. So I like doing stuff like that. That's kind of like why I wanted to do like the Halo playthrough with everybody, you know, like, hey, let's do like two levels or something and then we'll come back, you know, next week and do two more levels and work our way through all, you know, every fucking halo game. That was my intent. So and, it's just trying it's been, to, uh, when was the last time we played six months ago? Probably. Yeah. And we, it was funny cause we actually got through half the game on that one. That's true. So, you know, if we can, you know, grab like, you know, Shane and whoever else, cause that's up to a four player game. We can go through the rest of that game, you know, so uh but we digress so like so we have family game of the year animal crossing new horizons happy home paradise cozy grove mario party superstars ratchet and clank rift apart and wario War get it together it's very nintendo heavy in the family game of the year as it is naturally most years yeah uh, ratchet and clank is the only game that's not nintendo on there and it's a playstation game <laughs> um that is one thing that i wish Xbox would kind of focus on a little bit. They're very good at their multiplayer. They're very good at their, you know, their shooters and their solo experiences, but it would be nice to see like the family game. And I'm surprised it takes two isn't on there for the family game, but you know, it might be like a different like area of family that it's focusing on. Possibly. Uh, Yeah. I don't know. So uh, fighting game of the year, Guilty Gear, uh, shit, Guilty Gear Strive, Melty Blood, uh, Type Lumina and Nickelodeon All Star Brawl, which that actually one that one surprises me. When I saw that coming out, I didn't care to give it any time of the day. But now that it's up for game of the year, uh, it might be something that I check out. Maybe if it ever hits Game Pass, I feel like fighting games in general have kind of faded from popularity in the past decade. Uh, yeah, but I think they're making a comeback with the, you know, you got these fighting games, you have the uh, brawlers, you know, you have like Street Ra- Streets of Rage 4 came out in 2021, I believe. And then we have the uh, sequel, you know, Shredder's Revenge Ninja Turtles brawler coming up here shortly. I hope shortly. So that'll be really cool to get my hands on as well. 
Uh, racing game of the year, we have F1 2021, Forza Horizon 5, and Hot Wheels Unleashed. The Those last Forza two. Should, Forza should win that one. Forza should, but uh, Hot Wheels Unleashed isn't anything to, you know, snuff at. That one is a it's a really fun game. So I feel like not a lot of people were talking a whole lot about that one, and they should. Like the detail that they put in that game is, while not as grand in scope as Forza Horizon Five, they definitely put a. You can tell that both those games were created out of love with those studios. Uh, F1, I, I mean, I'm assuming it's like any other racing game. Uh, Role playing game of the year. We have Final Fantasy fourteen and Walker, so that's the online game. Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, which that's on my list to get, which is awesome to see that that's up for game of the year. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei five, Tales of Arise. You know, I was just talking about that. It is a great game, and uh, Wilder Wilder Myth, um, which I don't even I've never even heard of that one. So. Um, some of these I do actually want to go back and check out to see what they're all about, especially if they're making game of the year claims, you know, sure. Uh, sports game of the year, FIFA 22. Yay. Uh, Mario car or I'm sorry, Mario golf, super rush, NBA, 2k 22 riders, Republic and the climb Two. uh, the climb is actually something I was interested in for the Oculus. So I wanted to, I think they actually have a bundle where you get one and two on the Oculus Quest, so that might be something I pick up. Uh, strategy games, simulation games of the year, Age of Empires 4, great fucking game. I really enjoy that. I actually need to get back to doing the campaign again. Uh, Gloomhaven, Griftlands, Inscription, Loop Hero. Uh, I've only heard of Loop Hero, aside from Age of Empires. Um, immersive reality technical achievements, Lone Echo 2, Puzzling Places, Resident Evil 4 VR, Song in the Smoke, Yuki. There's a lot of games in there I'm not too familiar with, aside from Resident Evil 4. Uh, then we... It's actually a lot. So, you know, Immersive Reality Game of the Year, Demio. That's up there. Hey. Yeah, buddy. Uh, I Expect You to Die 2, Lone Echo 2, Resident Evil 4 VR, Song in the Smoke. Uh, then we also have uh, outstanding achievements for an independent game, Death Store, Inscription, Loop Hero, Sable, Unpacking. Um, Unpacking, I've heard really good things about, and Death Store was a really cool game. Mobile Game of the Year, Behind the Frame, Fantasian, League of Legends, Wild Rift, Mon Cage, Pokemon Unite. Uh, online Game of the Year, uh, Back for Blood, Call of Duty Vanguard, Final Fantasy XIV, Endwalker, Halo Infinite, Knockout City. Then we have uh, the achievements in game design, Deathloop, Inscription, It Takes Two, Loop Hero, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart. And then finally, Outstanding Achievement in Game Direction, Deathloop, Inscription, It Takes Two, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, and The Artful Escape. That shows, like, man, like, Ratchet and Clank has, if they take all of that, that's nine, that's nine wins for that, that game, which would I be got- really fucking cool uh- to see. I can't imagine it'll win all nine, but <clears throat> I don't think it'll win all nine, uh, especially going up against games like Deathloop. And I almost all of the categories it's nominated, it ha- it's going against other games that were nominated in like five or more other categories as well. Right. Yeah. So it's not like it's up against pushover games that nobody's heard of from studios that were created, you know, a year ago. Right. So that uh, February 24th, I will find out, you know, so that'll be pretty cool. And you know, we'll uh, we'll report on that as soon as we get those winners. But uh, aside from that, the um, Pokemon company showed off the 13 minute play of Pokemon Arceus ahead of its January 28th release date. So this is actually the one of the first times we get to see the game in motion. And they kind of like do a technical talk about like, you know, what you're doing, what you see, you know, how you're capturing things. This actually looks really cool. You know, I think I'll have more to talk about, more to say about it once I actually have my hands on it because it's still on the switch and it's still you know, like we talked about last week is, you know, it's semi open world. So I want to see how it plays out. So. 
uh, just a couple more weeks for that. And then um, today, actually, January 14th in 1987, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link turns 35. So happy birthday, Zelda 2. <laughs> but enough about that. Enough about games, man. Enough about games. Never yeah. enough about games. Just for today. Ah. Just for this episode. <laughs> oh, so what have you been watching, man? Oh, I I finished Jessica Jones season three. Finally, only took me way longer than it should have. But I'm up to Ant Man and the Wasp is next, so I'm back into the movies. Ant Man and the Wasp followed by Infinity War, uh, and then I get to finish up Agents of Shield. So that's what I'm. Watch. That's what I've watched. That's what I'm going to be watching. I've not had a chance to watch um, like Book of Boba Fett yet um, or really anything much else. Um, but I, I was just focusing on getting through the rest of Jessica Jones season three so I can finally put that in my rearview mirror because it. Uh, my interest in that had had waned quite a while ago. And so, Jessica Jones in, in season three of Jessica Jones. Jesus, man. I mean, my interest waned right away in season one. So, like, kudos for making it that far. That wraps up all of the um, Netflix MCU for me. Hell yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the end of that little saga. Um, Obviously, we talked about how Netflix MCU stuff is going to be linking linking into the uh, cinematic like film MCU portion. So um, I it, so I'm kind of done with it. Um, but moving forward, I'm pretty excited to to see where they take that. Cool, man. What have you been watching? Huh? 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 Uh, so I have been watching Book of Boba Fett. I watched episode three last night. And for this week's uh, release, and it was incredibly disappointing. Mm, Like uh, it. Yeah, man. Like written by John Favreau. It uh, was executed in a way that I did not like, especially for a Boba Fett show. You know, there's certain characters that you want to see just like be badass. And in this one, like. I don't want to like go into any spoilers or whatever, but like they had a whole like car chase scene essentially in, in the middle of the town with these teenagers on like weird ass fucking Vespas that were all brightly colored. And it just like you, like the person that they were changing the camera angles or chasing the camera angles and shit like that. It like, it seemed very eighties kids movie ish. And like it, I did not like. I, I fucking ha- actually hated this episode. So, um, that but was disappointing. So far, it's one episode of of the three. Yeah, I mean, so it's a slow start, uh, and I was expecting it to ma- make its turn, which it did. I just wasn't expecting it to go in this this direction. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where it goes from here. I mean, if this is what they're going to be, kind of treating their legacy type characters like I'm actually a little worried about how they're actually doing Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. I mean, it could just be a one off. I mean, not, like Mandalorian had its fair share of episodes that I wasn't a fan of. So, yeah, I suppose every every show <clears throat> has that, you know, handful of episodes that are just like, ah, we can skip this one. <laughs> yeah. And it, I'm not the I'm not alone in this, you know, like as I dropped in the group chat, I saw the Penny Arcade comic that they mentioned about, you know, this week's episode. And yeah, like I even told them on like Twitter or whatever. I was like this. I've never I have never had a Penny Arcade comic where I've agreed to the almost perfect level is what they're stating, <laughs> you know, like it was sad. It was a sad, sad episode for sure. Uh, and then I've been watching Cobra Kai season four. That sad streak just keeps going. Um, actually not liking season four. You know, I feel like they brought in too many legacy characters. Uh, they stretched out everybody 
you know, so like you're only getting bits and pieces, like little vignettes, essentially, in every episode of different characters so that they can try to give everybody screen time. And my fucking problem with Cobra Kai, and it has been since season one because they kept doing it. You know, they were pretty heavy handed in this in season one was like the whole misunderstanding. Right. So you have Danny, uh, you know, LaRusso, Daniel LaRusso, and then you have, you know, Sensei Lawrence, you know, and they were they always had their beef in the Karate Kid movies. Right. So that's like their main thing for season one. And then they try to work it together. And then it seems like it would like it could work. And then something happens. And instead of asking what the fuck was going on, they just assume the worst. And so now like they're fighting again and they it's like a rinse and repeat thing with this series. And I don't know if I have it in me to watch season five if they uh, come out with a season five. So I haven't finished season four yet. Like I have like three episodes left, but like it's not a good season. There's just too there's just too much going on and too many like pointless cameos just for the sake of cameos. Uh, I wouldn't say cameos. They're they're actually bringing them in and using them in the story. So Mm -hmm. like I knew that they were bringing them in because of all the promotional art. But uh, the Cobra Kai instructor came back from Karate Kid 3 and, you know, he's trying to do different things because he's kind of realized like he was a dick in kill and cobra or uh, karate kid three but then you know oh misunderstanding here we go and then i don't know man it's, it's tiring it's a tiresome trope that they're they keep relying on that's a shame yeah so that's what i've been watching wow it sounds like you've had a disappointed week in what, what you've been watching Jesus, disappointing week in most cases, aside from, you know, my games and your cookies. And my you cookies. Got I did got them. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I got them, man. Um, <clears throat> it's not getting great reviews, right? It, it got like a six to start off with, I think, for the first two episodes. But How I Met Your Father is going to be premiering on Hulu on January the 18th. But I kind of want to watch it, you know. I've read nothing but bad things. Yeah, and it's one of those things I'll find out for myself. Yeah, it's like it has a slow start. It is what it is. And I'm like, well, I, I don't yeah, even so, know if I'm interested personally. Given I'll how, check it out. Yeah, just the way that they ended How I Met Your Mother was so like, what? What the fuck was that last season all about? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm interested in investing time into this. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I'll check it out. You know, um, Scream, however, I, I was iffy on that one, but I'm getting nothing but good reviews on that one. Like I'm seeing people on social media really like it. I'm seeing uh, reviews do pretty decent. It's got a 75 percent freshness on Rotten Tomatoes uh, and a 62 overall on Metacritic. Where, you know, I, I've read some things on Metacritic where some of the reviews are knocking it pretty hard for certain things that other people are praising it for. So it, if you look at that and you're like, oh, OK, I can see where they're going and you're going into it as a popcorn slasher film, <clears throat> I think it's going to be pretty good. Uh, I, li- I actually like Scream. You know, there was a couple movies where it kind of got a little shaky, but overall, like I'm not a horror person, but Scream was always one of those movies. And I've seen every single one where I can't say the same about any of the other ones like Halloween or, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street or whatever. So, sure. yeah, there's so many of those, too. Yeah. So do you have any interest in seeing Scream or were you ever a fan of that franchise? I'm not a fan of horror in general. I just don't find it particularly uh engrossing to me i'm I'm, that's not that i'm opposed it's just not something i go out of my way for right you're not your cup of tea yeah like i think the last horror movie that i watched that was like oh wow that was actually good was um saw the first saw oh wow okay because i I went into it like okay it's just gonna be another you know slash him up kill him you know, jump scares, that type of thing. And then I was like, wow, that was actually a fresh idea. Like it was unique. It was interesting. 
it had a twist. Um, but then they killed it. So then I lost interest again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think they went a little too far. Too many entries for the soft franchise, I think. They should have just left it at three and and been done, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but but it makes if it makes money, they're going to run it into the ground. Yeah. Why not? Uh, there is uh, a show coming out. Uh, on Netflix on February 3rd called Murderville. Have you seen this at all? Have you heard of this? I've only seen it in passing online. So it's based on a BBC three series. Right. So I would think of it treated like kind of like The Office, how they have theirs. And then we are, we're going to have ours. Um, it's going to star Will Arnett. And he's him and all the other people, like all the other actors and whatnot. They're going to have a script and this except for the co-star. <laughs> so like he's going to have celebrity partners uh, joining him for a six episode series. Right. And it's all going to be kind of just up for. um, It's if they're like they have to kind of like ad lib it, essentially. I wonder how long I wonder how long it'll be until um, one of these guest stars breaks the script. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Well, because so I looked at it, right? So on IGN, they posted the article about it and they were able to say that the six episode run is going to feature detective seattle which is will arnett and he's going to be teaming up with annie murphy conan o'brien ken jong uh kumal nanjiani and marshawn lynch and sharon stone marshawn lynch (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) like the idea of this man has the potential of sounding really fucking funny right now, are these people playing themselves? Uh, no, I think they're playing like detectives in different towns. Interesting. So like, so uh, let's see here, looking at the IGN article. Um, so he, Terry Seattle, and he's a homicide detective. In each episode, Detective Seattle will investigate a murder, aided by a celebrity guest who hasn't been given the script. For Terry, every day means a new murder case and a new celebrity guest star as his partner, reads the official synopsis. But here's the catch. Each episode's guest star isn't being given the script. They have no idea what's going to happen to them. The show's six-episode run uh, goes with the, the people that I mentioned, and they're going to try to figure out if these, people, if these celebs can crack the case. Together, Quote, together, the guest star and Terry Seattle will have to improvise their way through the case, but it will end up it will be up to each celebrity guest alone to name the killer. Join them as they punch a way one way ticket through Murderville. So I think it is a celebrity like they're they're playing themselves. So Terry Seattle is teaming up with Leon Conan O'Brien to solve yeah. the murder. Yeah. It's now the only way I can see that working, though, is if it's live. Uh, right? Because <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, if if the script gets broken, they could just be like, wait, well, hold on, back up. Uh, we can't do that. So come up with something else. OK, go. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I mean, you can kind of. Like ad lib it, you know what I mean? It's almost like um, Will Ferrell doing Anchorman podcast. You know what I mean? Whereas like he's in character and they're going to stay in character and then they're going to try to kind of keep everybody in a sandbox. Yeah, the the script that's given to everyone else must be very vague, too. Yeah. So uh, so the general premise is that Arnett is the lead detective with a each celebrity guest starring as his new homicide trainee. We're basically making law and order without the script, they said to Hollywood Reporter. One of the de- one of Detective Seattle's first cases enlists Conan O'Brien to help solve a magic show murder case, which brings to mind Arnett's time as uh, Gob in Arrested Development, a case that involves a rival magician, a former assistant, and a mom's as- association. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it sounds like it's, it has, you know, it'll be funny. They're keeping it to only six, so I don't think it's going to, like, you know, outlive its welcome or outstay its welcome. It's not a trick, Michael. It's an illusion. Yeah. 
So you know who you know who would be, I think, a good guest star it would be uh, Jack Black. That yeah, I could see that. That'd be really funny. Maybe for season two. <clears throat> well, so. well, I guess that means everybody needs to watch it to get those ratings up. Yeah, because Netflix will kill it if they don't. But yeah, it's uh, it's being under the genres of comedy and crime. So it's I'm I'm excited about it. I it came across it yesterday and something in me was just like, I got to fucking watch this. I don't I'm not going to be able to like power through, you know, all of them in once because it'll probably be like an hour. I'm assuming. But uh, yeah, that's probably fair. But who knows? It's only six episodes. We can knock it out in a week. So it's going to be exciting, man. But what's not exciting is Netflix raising its fucking prices again. Uh, Again. Again. Uh, It's not crazy by any means, but it they they adds up, you know, so I'm actually doing the 4K premium plan. So I'm going from $18 a month to $20 a month. Mm. So they're going to be doing a dollar increase for the standard plan, $2 for the premium plan that includes the 4K streaming. Yeah. But this is where, like, you guys make so much fucking money with all your subscription, you know, your subscribers. Like, this is what's going to kill everybody being able to do all the different services. Yeah, they don't care. They they do not care because uh, they Netflix, especially like their. Their subscription base is is nearly maxed out, like there's not a lot of growth there left. Right. Um, most of the people that are going to get Netflix have Netflix already. <laughs> right. But if you keep going so, up too high, they're going to get you're going to start seeing those declines. Sure. Are they especially since yet? you keep canceling we'll- everything? True. Um, Jessica and I were actually kind of talking to each other about this earlier this week Um, because once upon a time in our lives we had cable and then we were sitting there talking about it and we were like we have this subscription we have this one we have this streaming service and we added them up and we're like this is the same fucking price we were paying for cable and the whole reason we got rid of cable was because we didn't want to pay that much right so we don't think we're going to keep as many as we have. Yeah. We're, we'll definitely keep Disney plus because we have kids. That's pretty much the only one that is safe in our house at this moment. <clears throat> right. Everything else is up for discussion. And, and with them keep raising prices, you know, we'll see what happens. Right. Well, so what services do you, are you using now? Uh, we currently pay for HBO, Hulu, Netflix, Disney, uh, Paramount. There's another one out there, but I can't think of the name of it. So we have like five or you six. You have Apple, right? We do, but that's part of a family plan. Oh, okay. So. So it's not coming out of your pocket. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's cool. See, like, I don't mind that either. It's like, okay, you like use this login for the, you know what I mean? Kind of share it a little bit. And and it's not even it's not even like sharing, really. It's like Apple set it up so you can do that. It's not against their terms of service. No, but it's still sharing because you're not the one that's doing it. Like, so if they did family plans for all these other ones, then that would be neat because then we could, you know, rotate who has what and then just. Sure. That'd be more doable, but they'll never they, you know, Apple might be a weird exception to that. I I can't imagine all the others will do something like that because that's exactly what will happen. And then all of their revenue will go down. Yeah. So I can't I, you know, I can't imagine that they would do something like that moving forward, sadly. Yeah. Well, I guess only time will tell what, what they get what they do but uh speaking of uh disney plus so they announced today that um tim allen is going to be returning as the santa claus for a disney plus series which is going to be ending his time as santa claus well it makes sense yeah so he's going to be uh celebrating his 65th birthday like calvin right 
uh, Scott Kelvin, and he wants to return to the normal world. So he's going to be heading out to find a suitable replacement while preparing his family to leave the North Pole and rejoin the world. So okay. that'll, be, that'll be interesting. So, sounds like they're trying to maybe reboot in a way. Yeah, and that's actually a pretty smart way of doing it. You know, yeah, they're, they're using yeah, you're using the the claws in the Santa Claus, right? On how like you've already established that multiple people can be Santa in True. this world. So it's actually that's pretty smart that they're doing it. And that'll be like I've this year I watched all three for the you know the second and third one for the first time and then i'll watch this it's going to be uh hitting production in march so i bet you it's going to be coming out this holiday you know this december and then we'll uh we'll end we'll end his time as santa claus and then i would give it a year or two and then we'll see a, a reboot yeah that's probably accurate yeah so i like the santa claus especially the original i always that's one of my Go to movies when Christmas hits up. But uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, so in sadder news, um, obviously, since our last recording, uh, Bob Saget died <laughs> last yeah. weekend. Um, seems like it was not um, anything nefarious or drug or alcohol related just seems like it was was one of those you know things uh seems like it, it appears apparently that he died in his sleep from either a stroke or a heart attack um just uh just happened like that yeah i'm curious to see what what it is that actually did it you know cuz he was only 65 that's yeah. not old, you know. And I think I think if I'm not mistaken, I think his funeral is or was today. Yeah. So I don't know if they did. A, I'm, I mean, they probably did an autopsy. Um, actually, the article that I came across says autopsy shows no evidence of drug use or foul play. So but I don't think it goes into just like explicit detail. Like, yeah, this is what <clears throat> happened exactly. So. And I'm sure they won't do it and you know for a little bit of time. Yeah, hard to say. So just one of those things that, you know happens, sadly. But uh at least it was uh, you know, peaceful. One of the better ways to go probably, just in your sleep. Boom. Sucks for everyone else, but doesn't suck for the person that dies. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy because like it was the night that he finished up a show. Like he had made a post, you know, he had yep. reached out to people and he was like, Hey, like, let's, let's meet up. Let's do this. I got some plans. You know, he was, he had just set up a whole tour for 2022. So yeah, man, it's, it's uh, like, like that article that you sent, I see it like his tweet love tonight's show at PV concert hall in Jacksonville. Appreciate it appreciative audience thanks again to at real tim wilkins for opening i had no idea i did a two-hour set tonight i'm happily addicted to this shit check bobsaget.com for my dates in 2022 and then he i guess he made a call that day too to you know one of his friends was he's like let's let's set some shit up let's do some stuff and then like that was it it is it is a shame you know what i mean like i know He's one of those types of guys where it's like you either like him or you don't like him. But uh, I enjoyed him. I got I had the option or the uh, the ability to see him live one year, and he was really funny, man. Yeah, I'm definitely. I know I'm not alone in saying that the first time I saw his stand up, it was shocking to me. Not because of the content, but because I knew him as Danny Tanner. Right. And so, and, and, and you knew and, him from like America's Funniest Videos, where he would America's pop Funniest out of that little videos. house, yeah. you know. And he's like, you know, so yeah, man. It it is a shame, and like it's always a shame to see somebody, especially like when you've grown up watching somebody, you know, go out. It's like it's yes, it's, it's a weird thing. Somebody somebody at work <laughs> said to me this week because we were talking about you know Bob Saget and then Betty White and stuff like that, and. They they said something that's like, and it applies in our case for you and I for Bob Saget. 
Um, but specifically, he was talking about Betty White when he said, you know, pretty much very close to everyone in the world doesn't know a world without Betty White in it. Yeah. It's like, damn, that's actually pretty damn close to true. <laughs> There's probably only a couple thousand people in the world that know a world without Betty White. That's true. That's crazy, man. Yeah. And I think he was supposed to, uh, Bob Saget was supposed to be here. I think his tour was actually swinging by the Phoenix area. Uh, so. Well, I mean, if you planned out a whole, a whole tour, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. He was supposed to be here March 11th and 12th. Mm. At Stand Up Live downtown. Which I think is where I saw him the first time. But. I don't know, man. It sucks. So, you know, like. Like, it's crazy. to. It, it's weird, man. When I when I see this stuff and I read about it, it's, you know, again. A reminder of your own mortality. Yeah, exactly. So. Tell everybody that you hate to go fuck themselves, you know, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets out of this alive. All right. So, <sighs> all right, man. Uh, so let's move on then, right? That's, yeah, uh, you know what time it is. What time is it? It's time for Q&A with <laughs> d and <laughs> Yeah, man, let's do this. Uh, so what's your uh, what's your question for me? You Oh, you want me to go first this week? Yeah. OK. All right. Uh, so, Andy, what are the most important qualities in friends? Ah, oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think some of the most important qualities in a friend. Somebody that you can have, you can enjoy. Like, a, I don't know. Like, they have to have a sense of humor, right? But sure. they also have to, un, like, know how to read the room. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I think a lot of people, especially now, you know, with every, like, a lot of the things that I find start to, like, come up short with a lot of people, just in general, is, like, their balance. Once you have kids, your the balance starts to drift away unfortunately you know because you're focusing on your family which is understandable but it becomes one of those things where i think now it's easier to keep in contact with somebody with facebook and instagram and all that other shit but like once you have a kid you're essentially on a you've entered a different level <clears throat> where you don't see that these people anymore and so it's, I think, a, a quality in friends that I'm still trying to figure out is how to find that balance again. You know, and I think that's where the games come into play, where we play online and do this. It's like, yeah, while we might get our asses kicked in this game, I enjoy sitting there and bullshitting. You know what I mean? That brings a level of enjoyment to a friendship that I feel like, nope, you don't get anymore once you leave high school and start having a family. Um, but like humor, humor is a, a thing. I like to, you know, I want to be able to laugh. If it becomes such a thing where it's like, it's, you know, I have to roll my eyes more often than not, then it's, then that starts to change the friendship a little bit, you know? Uh, sure. And then like <laughs> maturity, you know what I mean? Like, especially now, like as we're getting older, shit's starting to happen. And while we probably would have made fun of it, in high school, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> my leg gave out. My back is out, you know, shit like that, you know? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't know. That's, that's a hard question to answer. I feel like, uh, independence is one for me that most people might not think of, but I, as, as you, you know, as you get into where we are, where we're not in our twenties anymore, we're not middle age. I mean, Maybe we're approaching middle age, but we're not there yet. But we're not in our 20s either anymore. We're not young 20s, you know, looking out to go get beers every right. every day or every weekend. So when I say independence, it's nice to have friends who can handle their own shit 
it, and it's not that you're unwilling to help a friend. It's that if you want to go, if you want to go somewhere, right? Like, hey, let's go to Top Golf. You don't have you don't have a, one of those friends that's just like, oh, well, I I I can't because uh money or i don't have a car or i don't have any you know what i mean like right so like hey let's go do this thing and everybody's just like yeah fuck yeah let's go instead of hey can i bum 20 bucks so i can eat today which in in your 20s is common and and i don't want to say accepted but expected in certain cases so it's kind of nice as you get a little older to have people that aren't um struggling so hard that's true. Yeah. Not to say that you can't struggle sometimes. I get it. But it's the constant. So having having friends that are, you know, a little bit independent, I think, is a nice trait. But Understandable. Yeah. yeah. No, it makes sense. You know, like, uh, especially now, like, with, again, with the whole kids thing, like we can go do that shit. But kids kind of take up a lot of that kind of time. And I don't mind planning stuff out. And that kind of goes in with the independence. Like, yeah, I'd like to go to Top Golf, Not tonight, because I got to do this dumb shit. But, you know, yeah, Saturday, what do you think of Saturday? Definitely. You know, so. <clears throat> impromptu plans are definitely much harder. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, all right, Dan. Uh, question for you. Yes, sir. What you got? Where would you most like to travel? Hmm. Uh, probably Europe. Probably Europe. Uh, Any, spe- anywhere specifically? Specifically, um, I think I would enjoy England, Ireland, Scotland, uh, and France. But really, I'm not even picky to that. Like, I really enjoy history. Um, so. There's so much history. There's history everywhere. I know everything goes back far, but the history that I'm interested in is is Western history. So Europe is definitely something I'm interested in individually. That's and it's not to say that other histories aren't important. It's just a personal interest, right? So <clears throat> you know, if I ended up in in Rome and throughout Italy, also wouldn't be complaining. Um, Greece, Germany, Austria, Spain, like it's pretty hard to go wrong with any of those for those reasons. Right. Um, sadly, we, uh, Jessica and I were, we were planning to go to Germany this year. Um, and this was, we planned this before COVID. <laughs> um, we were going to be going to Oktoberfest in Germany for her graduation. Uh, Obviously that will not be happening now. So maybe one year we'll go and hopefully it's not when we're in our (laughs) sixties. Right. But yeah, for me, it's probably Europe uh, is where I'd most like to travel and check things out. Cool. Uh, I think mine, I would like to go to like Spain. Yeah, Olay. I like to. Yeah, I like to. I got the Spanish ladies, man. Uh, I like to do that. I mean, somebody we were talking about this, and somebody because we were doing the twenty three and Me, right? And I was showing off like because I've done that, and so I was showing off like where my ancestry essentially came from, and this and that. And they were talking about like go like, do you ever want to go to Scotland, like Dublin or whatever? I was like, not not really. I mean, Scotland, the, the, I think the only reason I'd want to go to Scotland and I still do like, so this is the only reason I do want to go to Scotland is to go to the Lagavulin plant, you know, like the, oh, sure. where, you know, that whole distillery up there. That's the only reason I want to go to Scotland. Aside from that, like I, like, you know, I don't, uh, cause there was some of my, my ancestry that was, that goes up there a little bit. And I'm like, I, there's nothing there that drives me with the want to go there other than the distillery. I would love to go to, you know, go there and do the whole barreling process and all that. But if I wasn't going there, I don't want to go to Scotland. <laughs> you know, I just I don't I don't know why it just doesn't appeal to me. 
You know, I, the people were just like, you can go to a pub. I was like, I could do that anywhere. <laughs> you know, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it. I don't know. But Spain, I'd like to go there. I'd like to go to Italy, you know, for sure. Uh, you know, obviously being such a, a gamer and into anime and stuff like that, I'd like to check out Japan. Yeah, you know, and aside from even aside from the anime and gaming thing, like I think just Japan is very pretty. You know, uh, depending but, on where you at. Yeah. Yeah. So like go to the different festivals, you know what I mean? Like I'd love to see the cherry blossoms over there. Like seems like a, a basic answer, but you know, like I've seen pictures where it's just like covered, you know, like during the festival, you see them all the leaves fluttering about. I'd like to do that. We see like the Netherlands and, and uh, Switzerland. You know, we I see a lot of photos on certain like Instagram traveling uh, yep. pages that I see. I love to do that. The Maldives, you know, like shit like that. Something that's like that. I'm able to experience something that I don't get here. You know what I mean? Crystal clear mm-hmm. blue waters. We don't get that here in America. That's one of the reasons we like cruises so much. I mean, you're limited on where you get to go specifically, but you get to experience a lot of places in a short amount of time for a reasonable cost. Yeah, which I've never done. I'd love to do a cruise. There are tons of fun, man. Like after COVID, highly recommend. Yeah. My favorite place I've gone on a cruise so far is the uh, Grand Cayman. Okay. For what it's worth. I like to do that. I like to go down to like uh, Tulum, Mexico. Like... It doesn't seem like Mexico that we're familiar with, you know, being right off of Arizona where it's just desert and maybe a little bit of ocean. Like this place looks like a fucking jungle. Yeah. And that's exciting. Like I like that. Yeah. So that's uh, that's mine. So Uh, for what it's worth, too, if you if you uh, have a hard time getting to Japan because of cost or time or whatever, um going to washington dc in certain times of the year that that's a good uh, alternative for cherry blossoms because they have japanese cherry blossoms all over washington dc so um certain times of the year they bloom and it's really beautiful um, i've been there once when that was happening of the two times i've been to washington dc in my life that was one of them uh it, it was in uh mid-march Awesome. So, yeah, for what it's worth, just putting that out there as an option. Yeah, man. I Well, we need to go there anyway, just because I want to, like, check out every state, you know, to fill up my my frame. Oh, right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that'd be fucking dope. Dude, it, Washington, D.C., there's so much packed into that little area. So uh, much. Yeah. You could spend cool. a month there and not see it all. Anyways. I could ramble on for a long time about that. (laughs) (laughs) All right, man. Well, I think that's uh, that's it. That's all we got. Unless you have any other closing thoughts. I do not this week. Uh, I am thoughtless. I'm just ready to get back into and go play some games tonight. Hell yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that has been Jabberbox episode 27. Thank you so much for joining us. And don't forget that we post each and every week about whatever it is we want to talk about. If you like that, please join us over on patreon.com slash dandy digital, where you can write it and be part of the show and get the episodes early. If you have no bucks to toss our way, that is just dandy with us. Please find us and subscribe to us over on YouTube or any of your po- favorite podcast services and give us a rating so it can help us grow this into something bigger and better. Until next time, stay safe out there. Wash your hands.